And then all of a sudden the stories emerge. And then all of a sudden you see it's real. And then all of a sudden the kids' voice are starting to come out. My, the video I use more than any other uh, is three little boys, five-year-old, six-year-old boys, sitting around a feedback loop they drew. Because one of our kind of cornerstone ideas is if we really want to transform schools, we really want education, sustainability, and green schools, systems understanding must be fundamental. Because that's kind of what's missing. Whether you look at climate change, destruction of ecosystems, you know, the creation of, 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 of poverty and inequity in the world, guess what? These are all systemic phenomena that arise very predictably by the way we live, but not what anybody wants because the larger systems at play are driving us this way, even though our values and our genuine aspirations would take us this way. No one wakes up in the world wanting to destroy species, right? Or ecosystems, right? But look what we're doing. Because the larger systems that we've created produce those outcomes very predictably. These three little boys are sitting around a table because they have a problem in their life. They're having fights on the playground. And they came in from lunch one day, and you know, their teachers are getting on their case, and they're worried their parents are going to get pulled into school. Every, every time they go to break, they have these fights. And they draw a feedback loop. And the feedback loop is a little circle of things causing each other, has two words, two key variables, mean words and hurt feelings. And teacher walked by and said, hey, would you explain me what your picture is? And they said, oh, well, we're trying to understand this system we've created that's leading us to have fights in the playground. These are their words. And we're looking for where the leverage is. Their words. Six-year-old boys. And then one of the boys says, well, you see, first we have mean words. Then we have hurt feelings. And then when we have more hurt feelings, we have more mean words. And then we have more mean words. And then we have more hurt feelings. Then we have more mean words. And then a fight breaks out. Then one of the other little boys goes, well, we tried saying I'm sorry, but we actually don't think that's very high leverage. <laughs> and then another little boy is pointing his diagram and says, well, we tried this and that's crossed out. We tried this and that's crossed out. None of those seem to really make a difference. But we're still looking. And the next time we have a fight, we're going to try this. I've shown this video to a lot of audiences, and I'll tell you the most common comment I hear in this country is, can we take those kids to Washington? <laughs> they seem to demonstrate an ability to talk, you know, respectfully, with enormous differences in view about a really common, complex issue that we really need amongst the people who are we elect into our governments. But it's common stuff in the system schools, because human beings, children particularly, are natural systems thinkers. I want to summarize two or three points from all of our work that I'm hoping are helpful for you. Human beings are natural systems thinkers. Children are born to think systemically. We do grow up in families. We do hang out in communities. We walk on streets. We play in playgrounds. We live in a world of interdependence. You think nature would have designed a species fundamentally inimical to nature? Nature is interdependence. Human beings have immense innate abilities to understand interdependence. And when you see it in the six-year-olds, you kind of go, wow. 